Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to Deb Chanel's 40s World where we do reviews. That's right, reviews on whatever we want to do a review on, television show, um, some type of branding material as far as what I bought and I want to show y'all what I bought out of a store. I want to review it or whatnot. But basically we do reviews on reality shows. We're going to be talking about The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 13, Episode 6, uh, The Giving Peach. And of course, that is all about candy. But why don't we just step on into some mundane, wasn't worth even viewing, but since they showed it to us, we went on and caught what we thought was some major pieces, and we're going to go through them. First of all, we're going to talk about Cynthia. Cynthia, Cynthia, Cynthia. I'm like, oh, girl, what are you giving us? So what is Bravo doing far as taking whatever shots they want to take and what they want to make you look like? Because right now, girl, you are all over the place. At least that's what I'm getting, viewing and recapping on this particular episode that you were giving us. I mean, you were like, you want it. Portia to be there. Then you were talking to Mike about, well, what if uh, Dennis is coming? And Mike said, I want Dennis to come. That's my friend. I like him. Forget what Portia talking about. And then you were like, well, no, if Portia don't want him there, I don't want her to feel uncomfortable. Then you got your mama over there. You come about you want to invite your daddy. You're not sure about that situation. And uh, you thought Noel was going to be on your side. And you know, because she had told her about the incident of, you know, uh, your mother not really caring for your dad. Um, and what had hit, went down with the PSA, a public service announcement she did on one season. Don't know what season it was with Kenya. And I'm telling you the truth. I really don't know why your mother didn't know what a PSA was. And because it was very descriptive. To us, uh, what Kenya was planning on doing, and she was very thorough, meaning Kenya more about what she wanted to do and why she got certain women to talk about certain things. And Cynthia, you brought it up that her your mother was a part of a domestic abuse type relationship, and your mother was doing a very good job, excellent in her communication skills or what had happened to her did PSA real well and now we got all this story this backstory your mama time out she was she didn't quite understand what a PSA was and you know she don't she didn't really know she was gonna get all this backlash from her community back home and from her ex-husband family members and friends and whatnot coming at her sideways and stuff of that nature and I'm like Wait a minute, wait a minute, girl. The whole thing just made you look silly. And your husband now, I can say Mark, I mean Mike, was just looking like, why you even care about the situation, Cynthia? It's your day and my day. And I want to have certain people at the wedding, just like you want to have certain people at the wedding. Girl, if you want them there, you want them there. If I want them there, I want them there. But it's your day. Why are you even tripping? Or why are you even discussing something when it's your decision? You know, of course, they can say, I just want everybody to be happy. I'm like, I'm with Mike. It's about you. It's your day. If you invite X amount of people, X amount of people don't show up. That's them. That's on them. They were invited. You know, it just is what it is. Because most people would just look at you and say, why do you want another fabulous wedding? Because Bravo Show wasn't paid for it. And with COVID going on out there, all the insurance they had to probably put on your wedding. And you know how people are. They happy with someone. There'd be no Sue Bravo out the bazooka. Then it wouldn't be no show for none of y'all to come back on and show us y'all acting skills. Okay. Because I don't even take y'all serious nowadays. I just look at you at each episode when I do catch it. And I say, okay, let me see what the acting ability is doing. What are they giving me? What am I presuming that they're trying to show me? You know, and I just give my review on it. I just look at all y'all as semi B actors, C actresses, and actors. And you know, this is the way it is. Because 
don't nobody really take Real Housewives. We really don't nobody take the Bravo, Bravo franchise serious anymore anyway. So I had to look at it from a different set of eyes and a different set of viewpoints to give y'all the benefit of the doubt. But I'm like, if we were coming for the dumb acting blonde or brunette or whatever, Cynthia, you you got it down pat, girl. You got it down pat because you're trying to act like, you know, defending your mom in one hand and then you not defending her in the other hand. Like, we told you what this was. We thought she was strong enough to handle it. Then you had to go apologize to your mama, which I'm looking at your mama sideways. Like, girl. Miss Barbara, you know what a PSA was all about. I'm sure. Can you explain it to you or her people explain it to you what you were going to be going? You're going to be telling your story about domestic violence. And you know they were going to be showing this for learning processes or um, trying to let people know, you know, you've been through this, your struggle and everything, and you made it through. You came out on the other side. And you were doing well. And now you're trying to act like you're embarrassed. You know, Cynthia got you up on this platform. Which, you know, Cynthia has been on this platform for a very long time. And, you know, they might even show Mal in some different, you know, fraudulent light. You know, depending on how they're editing. But it was like, girl. And I was happy Mallory stood up to her mom and said, Mama, you know, I still talk to daddy. You know, just because y'all went through what y'all went through, I understand that. But, you know, there's really no love lost between us. No, he didn't feed us. Yes, you feed us. You fed us. Yes, you took care of us. You were 100% the man and the woman, the mom and the dad in the relationship. But, you know, I just, you know, just to say kids and grown kids just to want to just still see their parent, even though they bad. And they were no good when it came to raising them and providing for them throughout their whole infancy up to, you know, puberty, up into pre-adult, you know, adult. They weren't there, but for some ironic reason, they still want to cling on to that parent that wasn't there for them and didn't provide for them. So, get it, got it good, Barbara. I don't know where you're coming from. Kids do that. Okay, until they learn and they have their own kids. And then they still may be stuck with that attitude and you just have to go with it. But this whole thing about oh, Cynthia want this big old wedding, Cynthia want all uh, this uh, pop, pop and circumstance, or, you know, just the wow factor. She want everybody looking at her saying she's beautiful, she gorgeous, this, that, and third. She don't care about COVID restrictions. Mike and Mallory trying to tell her, look, girl, this is COVID time. We got time to get sick and be on our deal beds and all this because you want to look, you know, fancy and, and, and cute and, you know, I don't know, glitzy. Girl, that's basically what I was getting. And they were here for a Mallory. And same thing when it was with you with Peter. Mallory was kind of side sometime with Peter. And it just left you out in the cold, Cynthia. And I wonder why this keep happening to you, girl. But anyway, you know, then she thought nowhere was going to be on her side. They had a little sidebar. And when it saw the mama at her house, Mallory was there, fixed up some, looked like some good Sunday dinner. And Cynthia got to tell her, her mama that she wanted to invite her dad. And, and uh, Miss Barbara thought that was just a slap in her face. She said, I was your parent. I was your mother and your dad. And I provided for you. And no, I'm just going to wear my mask when I see him because, I, no, I don't really want him there. I'm like, girl, Cynthia. Why you even have to tell her? You didn't have to tell her nothing. Your dad would, if that's what you wanted, your daddy to be there. Just invite your dad to have your body them last time. Ain't nothing different. He still had, did domestic violence on her behind from the first time you got married to Peter. Nothing different. You know what I'm saying? So why you even have to address the issue? I'm like, girl, Mike, come get your wife. Come get your wife. Okay? She's not giving anything but what do you call it? School age mess. Just mess. So, I was totally disappointed with all of them. And then again, you know, we got the, got the kids out there trying to throw salt, trying to run their parents' business. And they just kids. They don't know nothing yet. They may know something when they hit 30, 40. Maybe it may be 50 that they learn something, but it just is what it is. But that dog gonna rile it, and that dog gonna know well. They need to be handled. 
And I mean seriously handled. They just all up in grown for being don't know what in the world they talking about. But we're gonna move on from that situation. I gave y'all my review on that whole scenario. Then, um, let me see, we got Drew Sedora and her so called husband Ralph. You know, it's a situation that Cynthia and Mike is going through. They need to talk it through because they're not on the same page. Um, this is Cynthia's second marriage. This is um I think Drew Sedora's first marriage but you know it seems like it's going to develop into some spoiled apples because they're not on the same page meaning drew and ralph and girl kenya don't want to see them together she's trying to be with latoya and trying to make fun of drew sedora's hair and try to look like a little I don't know, an animal wig or something, an animal on top of her head. And can't say, you know, all the time she's been in Hollywood, been doing things. She should have better stylists. You know, again, Kenya is playing her role, uh, the mean girl, a mean woman. And she's taking all the stripes. She's making her money for the part that she has to play. I don't have a problem with that. That's what she signed up for. She's giving it to us times 10. Now she done inducted little Latoya done came out. And I think Candy was responsible for bringing her on. And she's doing what she's assigned to do to be, you know, pretty much Kenya's um, mentoree and little Kenya versus big Kenya. And they just have their little kikis and kakas and all that thing you want to say. But Candy ain't really feeling it. She's like, Kenya, girl, you have definitely saw your men in me. And Latoya. And I'm going to let y'all be. Because I'm just going to be here with the old ones. I'm going to show my love on Marlo. going to show my love on Portia, Tanya, and the rest of the crew. I'm going to let you just hang over there. Because I got my own set of problems. Okay? So that's pretty much how it went with Drew Sidora and her husband. They still trying to work it out. His daddy had passed. And they trying to, you know, come to some type of... Uh, meeting of the minds but you know for me just looking at the whole situation then you got mama uh the store mama involved and all this kind of stuff uh it's not gonna to me it just don't look like it's gonna last because ralph don't look like he want to change and and none of that is just gonna be what it is what it is but like i said a portion was trying to tell uh portion and cynthia met up because cynthia wanted to see how she felt about her inviting Dennis because uh, Mike wanted Dennis to come. And pretty much, you know, um, Portia was saying, uh, wear your big girl panties and, and say no to that idea because I'm not over her, him, or just that and the third. I don't like to say, Portia, you can't tell nobody who not to invite. I mean, was it wasn't wrong for Cynthia to even bring that idea to you. Yes, it was because it's Cynthia's wedding. Whoever she wants to invite, whether it's a friend of her or yours or whatever, just deal with it. Either come or don't come. So, you know, your grown portion, deal with it. Okay, that's all I'm going to say because you know you want Dennis back. You just don't want the publicity that's going to come with that decision that you made. I mean, if that's who you want, trifling and all, and he ain't going to be, you know, promise to you to stay with you and be with you and give you this fairy tale of marriage and, and relationship you want all three of y'all to have, meaning you, PJ, and him. It's not going to be that way. He, he likes what he likes, and he wants you to sign a prenup, and you act like you don't want to sign a prenup, and then you're going to be having issues with his mama again. And it's just not worth the portion. Stay single. Don't do you. Co-parent, and everything be beautiful. Okay? Then we get to the piece of resistance. I think I covered everything. We go to Candy's event. We got Candy, honey. She throwing it down, serving it up, and showing everybody she a boss. She was hosting a charity event. The club 501C uh, LLC Candy Cares Corporation. She was trying to feed the um, homeless out there, the single parents out there doing her darn thing. Then trying to deal with Riley, trying to get on her behind about get my money from my dad. And I'm like, wait a minute. Get your money. You've been hanging around Mama Joyce too long, Riley. And it's time for Candy to not spare the rod on your behind, okay? Because you're going after your daddy who you have been driving and spending time and driving around Atlanta seeing whoever you want to see. But did you go stop to see your daddy? Did you call up your daddy and say, I'm on my way. I'm coming to see you. We're going to chit-chat about what you're going to help me with. Because Mama has been doing a lot for me throughout 
since I came into the world, being conceived. I know y'all weren't on the best uh, situation of how y'all got together because, yes, I found out you were married. Mama was a side chick, but you were telling her stuff, this, that, and third. Like, y'all won't be together, but I know it's a bunch of lies, but came up to find out that you my daddy, so you need to take care of your responsibility. Now, I'm going to college. I choose LYC, New York University. I plan on staying down, and I need my Rent paid for, some food, some clothing, my books paid for, and anything else. Can you help mama out? Because she's been doing a hell of a lot, and she's done a great job to this point. And poor Candy, she's sitting up there, well, telling her hairdresser, well, Riley want me to go after her daddy. And her, her, her hairdresser was pretty much telling her the truth. I was like, I came out like how her hairdresser said, but, you know, depending on, you know, where her hairdresser was and her etiquette of how to tell your 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 customer that you know pretty much making a fool out yourself because you can't make nobody pay regardless of whether they should pay or whether they shouldn't pay or whatever you can only go you know turn them over to CPS not child care service but y'all know what I'm saying to go get the 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 uh, doc correct documentation, paperwork done, so you can try to get child support, you know, stuff of that nature, since it don't seem like y'all can come to agree agreements of the minds of how we gonna get this thing settled, okay, since so you couldn't seem to get it done when she was an infant, all through high school, all through middle school, all through elementary, you couldn't get him to pay, so my ideology, or ideology, what my ideology is trying to figure out how you're going to get him to pay now. And then you're going to send Riley to a very, 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 very expensive uh, college. I mean, you own Real Housewives of Atlanta. You got your other businesses. So I guess, you know, you can front the money. It's going to be pretty tough if you say it so yourself. But my thing, Candy, why did you tell this girl she had to go to NYC? That may have been her dream school. That might have been where she wanted to go. This, that, and third. But you got to say, hey. I got money, but I don't know if I got that kind of money. What is your second and third choice? Okay, baby girl. Because a lot of people can get these scholarships, even though I'm in a different tax bracket we got going on. But what about the doctors and the lawyers and the surgeons using that lot of money to send their children that make A's, B's, you know, or A's, straight A's, and got that lottery money, and they were sitting up there getting paid from the uh, lotto kitty. You know, I'm like, did you did you think that out, Candy? Did you try to do that, my girl? Because you got some surgeons that's making a hell of a lot more money than you being on this reality show as well. Surgeons, specialists, you know, lawyers. And they still got their uh, children pinging off of the uh, lotto where they can get them A's. As long as they had an A or B average, they got the money. I don't know how they did it, but I know for a fact. Some of them did it because I work with some. Okay? I'm just saying. So I don't know where you come in. Then on block side, he probably said the same thing. Well, damn. Can't she go somewhere close and less expensive? You know, especially if you want me to help with the benefits. Like, I, I say she my child. I don't disown her and then like that. But my pockets ain't running that deep. And hell, my other kids ain't even going there. So, you know, something like that. Can you should have talked to Block. Like, okay, well, what other school? Now, I call Riley want to sit up there because you know she's been privy. You know she's been given what she wanted her to have, whether she really deserved it or not. Because a good kid is a good kid, but don't make like they have to have a mountaintop. You know what I'm saying? Whether you can give it to them or not. Sometimes things need to be earned. And we already know Miss Riley can't even wash up um bathroom. She can't even clean. She trying to figure out what some of the cleaning supplies that she should have known about when she was 10. I'm just saying. But then she blamed that on you. She said, I ain't never seen my mama clean. I ain't never seen her do that. So I'm like, see, that's a child not in a child's place. That's all I'm going to say. But yeah, Riley trying to put this pressure on Candy, trying to tell her to go get her money. I wish it was a law. When your child turned 18, and depending on who was really supposed to pay child support, or how it goes, or what parent make the most, or whatever, it should be a way the child should go sue that parent. You know what I'm saying? Take the burden off the parent altogether. They really didn't want to see the other parent pay since they didn't do such a great job of paying or had paying. 
in those formative years. You know what I'm saying? Get a power to ride it. Because I bet you, Riley was sitting over there. She didn't care. She was getting all them presents from you, Todd, Grandmama, and any other family member that wanted to give her some. She ain't thinking about her daddy. Now she thinking about it because you fussing probably with her about you're going to have to do better. You, I want to see X, Y, Z. One, two, three, and all this stuff. So Cat should have been doing that from grade school. You know, getting on Riley behind and letting her know, look, I pay this. You don't pay this. Your daddy, your real daddy don't pay this. So I need you to step up on your game. And then Riley, like, okay, well, I tell my daddy, you need to make my daddy pay. Well, for one thing, Riley, I would have told her, I can't make nobody do nothing. Okay, only thing I can do is pay taxes and die. Those are the only consecutive things that I know going to meet every American out here living in the world, okay? You're going to pay taxes or you're going to jail and you're going to die. That's just something that's going to happen. But as far as you trying to tell me to go get your biological daddy to pay for you when he didn't want to pay for you since birth, girl, how realistic is that? I said, Lord, and you going to school to be a lawyer, Riley. Come on. You can't get something from somebody that don't want to give you something. I don't care if the law is telling you you have to. Because Block may choose to say, I ain't paying nothing. I just go to jail. Then what you got? You got your dad in jail. Then you got to deal with the fact that he never really provided for you. When he had a chance to provide for you, he didn't provide for you. Then when you want him to provide for you, college and stuff like that, he still said no. So I'm like, this little man that don't want to be in your life, Riley, not really, not really, not really, because he came on the show for what Don Juan said, did his little entrance, trying to meet you on camera and trying to, you know, say, you should have been uh, trying to get that paycheck from him to get on some, um, some, um, the money saved up for Riley. But, you know, you didn't do that then. So I'm like, girl, don't make your, your, your uh, firstborn tell you what to do, how to go pay it, and, 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 and where to put it to. No, ma'am, no, sir, no, Lord. Okay? But that's all I got, honey. I was like, uh uh, between Riley trying to tell Cynthia what she should be doing, and I ain't went. I ain't had no real life experiences to be trying to tell no grown folk that don't been through some stuff how to handle you. I mean, Riley, I know where well, they think they mamas are just stupid as dirt, okay? At least that's how the conspiracy is going on how Robert is editing out these scenes. I'm like, got Riley over there trying to boss and say she got she got to go. She got to get away. She got to do her own thing. I'm like, where Riley get some money from? Where did she come out and got this golden egg that is just... Or a golden tree outside, and she's just going and pulling out money, pulling out her money, pulling out money. I'm like, girl, Cynthia and Candy have definitely raised little monsters running around there, trying to tell them what they didn't do and what they should have been doing. I'm like, ooh, don't spare the rod on these children. They, 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 you still got time to whoop them in shape? Because they got time to tell y'all how to perform. Then let them, let Noelle pay for her apartment. Let Noelle, since she got all these sponsors and she doing her YouTube and all that, Cynthia, cut her dry. Say, okay, you know, you got all this mouth, you embarrassing me on TV and this, that, and third. Or they edit them to where it's making you look, look making me look embarrassed. You, you go on and handle all the stuff that you need. You don't need my uh, help. You buy your own plane ticket when you want to come to see me and this, that, and third. You pay for your food, clothing, and sheltering yourself. I just be watching you grow up and becoming the woman you need to become. And that's what Cynthia need to be telling Riley. Okay? I mean, I'm sorry. Cynthia need to be telling Noel. And on the other hand, she be telling me, Riley, okay, you want to go NYC? Okay, you need to find out can you get an after-school job or the work, you know, a little work program they be having? You need to get a job. Your car's not coming with you. Uh, you need to pay for your rent. You know, since you got all these brilliant ideas of how it's supposed to handle your biological father and get this money for him, you need to handle where... You at least buy all your books. So you need a set you need a part time job while you're up there in New York. Be a starving artist, be a starving college student, however you want to see it. But I got your your education and, and I got your rent. Okay. But after you get into your junior year, I need you to have your rent for your apartment too. 
Because you're you just flying off the handle with your mouth too much and you're embarrassing the hell out of me, okay? Because, you know, Baba could be editing to see how, you know, she could have been explaining herself a little different where it would have been more pleasing to the palate over here for me to uh, preview. But, you know, what was given was just total disrespect from both children. And, you know, like I said, Riley, nah, at first she used to be nice because we used to hear from her. She used to love her mom and all that stuff. Now she's clowning on her mom and clowning on her daddy, okay? And she probably clowning on Todd. We just don't know either, okay? But I see what she's giving off to her mom, and that ain't right what Riley did. Candace, a hardworking woman, trying to do the darn thing, trying to help other people. She already said she helped other people in her family, get that in third, and Riley going over here showing out. I mean, Mama Joyce got a whole tub behind, but she's talking about cleaning that bag from and stop letting her brother clean that bathroom. Hell no way I didn't know how to clean the bathroom me, but they just shocked. And I'm like, these are black children. Okay, they should know all the fundamentals of knowing how to do for themselves. But I see they were sheltered because their parents, Candy and Cynthia, did it to them. So they need to undo it. Or stop showing them on television. Because it just it's just, you know, it's making and I know it it, it, it looks Difficult for Candy because I've seen her look like I know my daughter didn't just call me stupid on live television. And you know, Cynthia, when it comes to her mama and Mal and Noel, they just and Mike, but you know, I'm like, maybe Mike might be her saving grace where she, like Kim Zozier says, look pretty but don't say nothing. Okay, and I'm about right with Kim Zozier. Candy knows she could do a lot better by trying to uh, tighten up on Riley's mouth. Because Riley might gonna get her in trouble one day. If she thinks she can go and talk to other people like that, she's gonna be sadly misinformed. Okay, sadly misinformed. And Candy's not gonna be there to help her. Because Riley got a mouth on her. As well as Noel and ooh, child. I'm like, ooh, if y'all, if, if Barbara wanted to show y'all in the worst light of being or having privileged children, um, they show Ace that. They show brought it out, okay? But that's all I got, y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed the review. I'll be back next time giving you a review. More than likely on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, depending on how I can get and see them, view them, and just see if it's something I really want to cover. But I'm just like, ooh, this season, season 13, they're just making Candy and, 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 and Cynthia look bad. Candy just with Riley. We have no misunderstandings with her marriage or with Mama Joyce and all like that. I'm good to see that. I'm glad to see that. But, you know, we didn't got, uh, we got Noelle still trying to handle her mama. Then we got her mama trying to handle her. Then we got Mal over there. Not even, look at, and then Mike, he's a piece of resistance. He's just telling her like he's always told her, get your house in order, baby. Before I get it in order for you. Pretty much that's what he was saying. Because he ain't got no problem with nobody telling nobody off. You know, this is him and Cynthia's marriage. He got nothing to do with none of y'all. Okay? I'm going to do what I have to do as a stepfather, as a, 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 a glowing uh, son-in-law, and, 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 and um, what do you call it, with male? I don't forgot what he would be, male. Brother-in-law, I guess. You know, I'm going to try to do what I can, but when y'all step in my area where I'm the man, then y'all might feel my rape. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm with Mike. I'm with Mike. You know, you need to handle Cynthia. Because Cynthia's still in her school age years or something. I'm not sure. That's probably why Leon maybe ma didn't marry her. Because he knew Cynthia wasn't always there. He had time to take care of another kid when he had Noel in the picture. So I understand that. And, you know, you know you were the side chick now. So... I mean, and Block and you both knew about condoms and stuff. So, y'all didn't really have to bring Riley in the world. But since she's here, you did an excellent job raising her. But trying to get this man, Block, to pay for something. When he ain't paid for something from day one. Good luck, my sister. Good luck. Okay? But like I said, you've been doing it on a thing. Go on and do it until she finish this college thing. And, and then tell her, uh-uh, you can come see me. But you need to get your own. Because I need to see you doing stuff for yourself and see how hard it is before you try to throw a rock at your own mama. You're going to throw, you know, at my glass house. And you living in my glass house. And I'm still taking care of you. And this is what I get. Girl, I'll be all over her can. All over her. But anyway, that's all I have. Hope y'all enjoyed the review. And I will see y'all next time. Good night.